I don't know how many of you know this, but the Lord told me how long I have before I'll be with him. In 2002, I remember I was seeking God and I said, God, how long before I can be with you? As far as how long before I go to be with you? And I was just saying it as a joke, kind of. Like I was joking, oh Lord, I want to, you know, be in heaven. How long? And then all of a sudden the Lord said, about 20 years. So that's what I know for myself personally. So if that was in 02, now I don't know what, what the Lord would say to everyone else. But I do know the Bible says the bridegroom will be a long time in coming, and there's a seven-year period. A lot of people forget to mention that. It's a seven-year period. When does that start? Did that start on September 23rd, 2015? When's the official start date of the first seven-year period? And then somewhere in there, the rapture is going to happen. Nobody knows the day or the hour. But God will say, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And those who have an ear to hear will all hear it and they'll know. And some will be activated by that word to go do something that the Lord told them to do. Others will just feel a release in prayer like they spent all this time just praying and praying. And all of a sudden, boom, they have peace. I feel like, and they just know, they prayed it through. Now is a time of prayer, you guys. You need to really seek God in prayer. Some people, you know, you look at the world and you say, what am I going to pray about? Just look at the news for five minutes and be ready as you're scrolling through the news that when you find the right story and try different places like CNN and Yahoo News and the New York Times Look for news in Tel Aviv that's translated to English. Just whatever it is. Just Then as you're reading, you'll know, okay, I need to pray about that right there. And you just stop reading, you know, and you don't even come back to the computer until you've got a release in prayer on that. And if you ever come to a place where you don't have anything else to pray about, you just get back on the news and search around. Until you see something that bugs you in your soul and you really need to pray about some stuff for them or for yourself. You know, maybe during this whole time, there's that whole struggle of temptation too. You know? And you just, really you just want to be with God, but you kind of need Babylon the Great to fall in order to shed some stuff that you need to get off of you. So some people can eagerly anticipate the fall of Babylon the Great because it'll put you in a situation where I've got to run and now it's God's will and the Bible says it's so and I've prayed and I've obeyed and now it's time to run and I got this. And when you come right around the corner and you get to your destination and you get out of the car and you're thinking, you know, I really need a drink of water. And you look over and there's like a... Somebody walked by and left one of those little unopened bottles of water. Maybe they had gone a long way and they didn't want to carry it. Or maybe they set it down for a second and forgot about it. But for whatever reason, you get out there and there it is. And it's a blessing from God. And it's a sign from him, yes, I've got this. And then all you have to do is pray and seek the Lord and make sure you're at the next checkpoint of the Holy Spirit. You say a checkpoint. Yeah, it's, it's a time where you go somewhere or do something that's just totally ordained of God. And God kind of gives you a victory in a bunch of little areas in your life. And you're serving him and worshiping God. And, and then you hit the next checkpoint. And if you miss a checkpoint, you start to have to, everything's so crazy that you really need to get right with God, like right away. So if you do miss a checkpoint, you'll be on your knees real quick when you see things not going your way. And you'll know, I've stepped outside of God's protection somehow. 
I got to find my way back and you'll be quick to do it. And others will weigh, will weigh it and be in prayer and be like, you know what? This is my day to go see the Lord. And if it's not, God will deliver me. And they just, they basically turn themselves in like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with the understanding I'm not bowing and I'm not taking that thing. And you're going to have to throw me in a fire. And they might just do exactly that. And in the fire, you have a meeting place with God and everybody in that place gets burned up. And it's judgment on them from God. Proof that you serve God, and this is a great big world that God can do a lot of miracles like that in a lot of individuals' lives. And like I said, watch the book of Enoch, the first, now I said in the other video, the first one minute. But some people, it's so convicting that they can't even watch that first minute. But when you get into the second minute, he starts talking about the elect and those whom God is going to protect. And the way he, he says it is awesome. It's for the end times that God, he's going to make peace with them. And they will be his people and he will be their God and he will triumph for them. And God will send his angels out and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then when he talks about how God comes back and he trods on the land and he's like this mighty God, proving that he is almighty God, it's awesome. Yeah, you gotta, amen.